Renegade Stadium. Good evening, everybody, from Wolfie's in West Lafayette. It is the Jeff Brown Show. We're going to talk Boilermaker football with the head coach from now until the top of the hour. Our phone number is 888-246-2678. We're on Facebook on the Purdue Athletic site, and we've already got a couple of people checking in, including somebody from Hillsdale, Michigan, and DeMott, Indiana. So let us know where you're watching from tonight. In addition to hearing from the coach, we're going to have Cadron Jenkins, a defensive end from Georgia, joining us, and Aiden O'Connell, our uh, senior quarterback from Long Grove, Illinois. But when we come back, it is the Jeff Brown Show with the head coach, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. There's more to the game. Petrus with time, high throws, picked off at the 25-yard line. One and a half sacks two years ago. Pass play here, and here comes a sack. Nowhere to go for Petrus. Branson Dean with his second sack of the year. Jack Plummer is in the game now at quarterback. So Purdue playing its second quarterback, and he keeps it here and has a huge running lane. Across the 45-yard line, it's a gain of 12 for Jack Plummer. O'Connell steps up, keeps it, and dives in the end zone for the Purdue touchdown. It be very surprising, to say the least. Big play again in the backfield by Jenkins. He had the last four against the Hawkeyes. Iowa rushes five, and here is David Bell out in space. Look out! Bell into Iowa territory. They're trying to catch him at the 30. He's pushed and finally runs out of bounds. The country. O'Connell off his back foot on a jump ball, and it's caught. What a grab that time by Brock Thompson. That would be the primary read here for O'Connell. O'Connell rolling right, throwing, and it's caught by Sheffield for a Purdue touchdown. Play fake here, setting up, taking a shot, going for David Bell. It is play action. Petrus in trouble, and he's going to get sacked. Play for the football. Second and 18. Trouble again, and it's Karloftis with the sack at the 10 yard line of Pe O'Connell. Gets rid of it. Oh, it's caught for a first down. It's David Bell who's there again. But well, Purdue's had the ball essentially this entire half. Yeah. O'Connell, pump fake, throw to the end zone, and the ball is on the Petrus pass over the middle is picked off. That's going to end the game. Cam Allen read it. Back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of ross Aid Stadium. Uh, tuning in tonight on Facebook, we've got Indianapolis, Leopold, Indiana, Munster, Indiana, Attica, Indiana, Elnora, Indiana, Decatur, Illinois, Brownstown, Indiana, and that's all so far. And uh, they're all pretty happy because they're Boilermaker fans and Purdue's coming off a great win against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Jeff, I've been uh, taking planes back from games for a long time. I don't think I've been on a happier plane than the one we came back from in Iowa City on Saturday night. I think you're right. We all we all were happy uh, with the outcome, and it was just really a, a great day uh, for our players, our team, our staff, our fans. And, uh, you know, they've worked hard. Uh, we've had some close calls here and there. But to go down to Iowa, who was probably one of the hottest teams in the country, and uh, not only win the game, but win it, pretty convincingly uh, in their stadium uh, against the number two ranked team in the country. Just a very rewarding victory. Well, we talked about the fact that you had to have belief and you had to go up there with the uh, thought that you could and would win the football game. And, you know, they got, they got a 38-yard play on their first play from scrimmage, which, by the way, was their longest play from scrimmage all day long. But I thought when you got the interception to end that drive, it set the tone for the day, and your defense just played lights out. You know what, the, the first turnover was key because it got us the ball. It took the momentum back out of their hands. Um, and you know what, we were ready to go. Our, our defense, um, you know, has played consistently strong all year long. There's a lot of guys on that side of the ball that have a ton of experience and they want to push themselves to continue to get even better and be a dominant force. And, um, you know, offensively we got things going better and uh, was able to move the ball and get some points. and. You know, it was just one of those days where, where things were clicking. Our guys were confident. Uh, we were playing aggressive. Uh, there was nothing for us to lose. And, uh, you know, really all the pressure was on them uh, because if they wanted to keep their playoff hopes alive, they, they needed to win that game. And we were able to, to come in there and knock them off. You know, if you look at what the defense has done, the fact that coming into that game they had been one of the top ten scoring defenses in the country and yet had only had two takeaways on the season, that was remarkable. 
But then you tripled that. Now you have six takeaways on the year, and now you're in the top five in the country in scoring defense. Uh, it's safe to say that the defensive turnaround this year has been amazing. Without question, it's been consistent. Uh, I, I felt pretty good about it uh, throughout spring practice and the summer and fall camp uh, because they really had the upper hand on us in, in, in practice all the time. I said, well, I, I hope we're, we're this good because uh, if we're not, then we're really bad on offense. <laughs> uh, so that was good. But uh, you know what? We were able to go into Iowa. We knew we had to kind of beat them at their own game, which was, you know what, we controlled the ball in the second half. Uh, we, we had long drives in the first half as well. Uh, defensively, we took them out of their game, especially in the second half. And when that happened, they had to throw the ball much more than they wanted, and that's when we got all our interceptions and sacks. So we just got to continue to build on that. Offense needs to try to get off to fast starts. If we can get off to better starts, it's going to put our whole team in a better position. So a lot of things to continue to work on. Uh, a lot of, you know, the, the really, if you looked at our schedule before the season, the, the last six games are the meat of our schedule. So we've got a lot of really good football teams coming uh, that we have to play, starting with Wisconsin this week, who we haven't beaten in a long time. So we've got our hands full. We've got to work to get better. We've got to you know, continue to be aggressive and make strides every week. A yeah, great defense to start up front, and we've talked all season long about the year that George Karloftis is having, and it doesn't always show up every week in the numbers. He doesn't have a whole lot of sacks, but he's got a lot of hits on the quarterback. And if you watch the game film, he is in the other team's backfield at least every other play. Really a, a dominant force, in my opinion, and uh, – Every game he brings it. Uh, he plays with relentless effort. Uh, he wants to win. He's worked his tail off uh, all year long to be a, a great player. And uh, without question, he's one of the best defensive players in the country. And I think he shows that. He's a, a team guy. He's unselfish. He just wants to you know, help his team to, to victory. And uh, Purdue means a lot to him and, and his family. And uh, you know, he's uh, come here to, to be a difference maker, and, he, and he's done that. So I really feel that. Um, you know, he'll just continue to shine even more, and uh, we've got to just continue to get better around him. All right, let's go to the phone lines for our first call. It's Don from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, Coach. Congratulations on your uh, your win on Saturday. My question is, uh, how all, with the uh, weather change starting to change and get cooler, uh, how often do you practice outside versus practicing inside in your football facility? Thank you. Well, that's a good question. Yes, uh, when the weather's not been as good, we haven't been as effective. So, you know, that's something we try to practice even in the spring and uh, throughout fall camp to, you know, get in some wet and elements. Sometimes it's hard to get in cold, cold elements, uh, you know, at that time of the year. But, no, we normally go outside. And, uh, you know, unless the field is just really, really wet uh, where we could get someone injured, we're going outside. And even at the end of last year, um, you know, we went outside practicing the cold. And, you know, you got to do what, what you can to get better. I think when the weather gets bad, you've got to be a more balanced team and you've got to be able to execute. And those are just things that we got to continue to prove upon uh, because it is tougher to – to, uh, you know, throw the ball over the field uh, when the weather's not as good. So, yes, we, we've got to work on it, but we do every day, and uh, hopefully we'll get better. All right, let's say hello to Boston, Evansville, Indiana, Boca Raton, Florida, Pullman, Washington, Chesterton, Indiana, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Greentown, Indiana, and across the river, McCutcheon Hall. We'll have more of the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group right after this from Learfield. Bobcat is...
Uh, we do have a question from one of the um, uh, Facebook watchers, and that is you have three defensive coordinators. Who is responsible for making the final call on defense on game day? Well, we have a chain of command uh, that works, but, uh, you know, the goal at first was to, you know, hire, hire a group of people uh, that were going to work together and uh, collaborate and, uh, you know, do what's best for the team and, you know, treat our players right and, and help us win. And, uh, and uh, uh, Ron English and, and Mark Hagan are the other coordinators that work, you know, right, right there with them and, uh, you know, responsible for the, the front seven and, and the secondary, and they all do a great job. And they, you know, have a ton of experience and, uh, you know, really have just fit in well uh, with our team and the existing staff, and uh, I couldn't be happier with them. Well, let's flip over to the other side of the ball, uh, Jeff, and, and I'm sure that the Iowa Hawkeyes, are. there's nobody happier in the Big Ten that David Bell is probably not going to see the Hawkeyes again than, than that club because he has just made a living against the Iowa Hawkeyes in the three years he's played against them. You know, it's hard to play that good uh, <laughs> against a quality opponent uh, three straight years. I, I just I don't care how good you are. It's hard to play that good. And, uh, you know, he's definitely – shined and, and I'm not talking to them. this is a really good defense uh, that we go against and we went against this year that was playing lights out and uh, he was a, a, a wrecking uh, crew uh, one man show that uh, came in there and, and you couldn't guard him and uh, there were a few times that they you know I thought they doubled him a little bit more but the few times that they did we were, we were able to kind of hit some in cuts and some things uh, in between the zones and I don't know if they took him out of it or not but uh, he won all his matchups, and uh, he made the catches. He ran great routes. Uh, he's a competitor. You know, this is somebody who a couple of weeks ago took a vicious hit in the Notre Dame game, knocked him out, bloodied his lip, ha got stitches. Uh, and there's a lot of guys that would not come back that soon. Uh, and definitely with his future, you know, he didn't have to. He could have said, I'm just going to, you know, wait for – prepare for the my next chapter but you know what Purdue means a lot to him uh he cares about his teammates he's unselfish he wants to help this program win and he definitely does a great job you know I think the the, the other thing to remember for for fans is the guy that he was matched up against one-on-one -on -one for a good part of the day Hankins was the reigning Big Ten defensive player of the week this wasn't some guy they pulled out of the crowd to play this was a guy who had been sensational the week before against Penn State like I said, it was it was a great day in general, and, and David was uh, off the charts good and uh, won all of his matchups, and Aiden was extremely accurate with the throws, which helped, and uh, we got a good protection. Really just it was a, a good all, by far our best execution as, as a team. Well, you mentioned the protection. Was it the best game that the offensive line has played this year? I think it was overall. Um, you know what, they, they work uh, their tail off. Um, a lot of times when sacks or something negative happens, it always gets blamed on the offensive line. That's really not the case. Uh, sometimes it is, but it isn't always. And they've continued to just give us everything they have. Um, you know, Coach uh, Williams and Coach Callaway, we have two offensive line coaches that work with them on a daily basis. We've invested a lot of time into trying to improve that as much as we can. But I, we couldn't ask for more from our players. And, um, you know, We've got a lot of season left to play, a lot of games, but uh, they, they played really good on Saturday. All right, explain to me the three-quarterback system because usually when you have tag teams in wrestling, you've got folding chairs and people come in and off the top rope, and we didn't know from play to play who was going to be on the field, and that was kind of fun to watch on Saturday. <laughs> well, when those things work, it is a lot of fun, and uh, fortunately for us, uh, it, it did. Uh, you know, it was something I had been thinking about for a while. We wanted to try to – you know, get better in the red zone and get better in some situations. And Aiden is a really good passer, but he has a few limitations. And Jack has a few strengths here. And Aiden has a few, excuse me, uh, Austin has a few strengths here. And I'm like, you know what, why can't we play more than one guy? Uh, I mean, what's, who says you can't? Um, and, uh, you know, let's, let's get a package together for each of them uh, so that when they go in there, they know what they're doing and uh, they, can, they can execute it, and uh, we can try to utilize some of their strengths to help us, you know, even if it's just in the running game, even if it's just in the red zone or inside the 10-yard line uh, to score touchdowns with a more, more, excuse me, more mobile quarterback. We wanted to, to, to use it all, and uh, now piecing it all together and timing it up, that's, that's not easy to do. you gotta, you got to think it through, and you got to be prepared. you got to make sure that uh, everyone understands uh, what to do, but – you know, for this Saturday uh, in October, it, it definitely worked for us. All right, we'll have more in two minutes from the Jeff Brom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. And it's Carlofis with 
gets the sack. Here comes the sack. Ransom deep. And Petrus's pass is intercepted. O'Connell, pump fake, throw to the end zone, and the ball is on the money. It's caught for a touchdown by David Bell. You guys believed you could do it, okay? You believed you could do it, then you went about it, and you got it done, okay? So the credit goes to everyone in this room, every player on the field. For a bunch of plays, a few plays are on the sideline. Credit goes to these guys in this room. You guys earned it. Yes, sir. Okay, you stuck with it. You continue to work. You continue to grind. You did a tremendous job. Okay, credit to the assistant coaches. Did a great job. Yes, okay, we worked hard through the off week. We got guys as healthy as we could. We came out here and practiced. We came out here and competed to the end. Okay, because you guys competed to the end. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, yeah, we so did. Just realize how good you can be if you're willing to believe you can get it done, yes, sir. and you're willing to do everything it takes to go get it done. And you guys did that. Yes, okay, this is a big win. You guys earned it. All right, you worked for it. You grinded for it. You gave effort throughout the game. You made plays over and over again. And you just hung in there to the very end and you played to the end. So I couldn't be any prouder than everyone in this room. You guys need to enjoy it. All right, this is a special win. Tremendous job. Couldn't be prouder. And that's awesome. Let's go! Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Wolf. Just view of the game out. They control the ball on offense uh, and run it and run it and run it, limit possessions. Uh, so, you know, we've got to try to find a way once again to beat them at their own game. Uh, and that's going to take a lot of focus and a lot of guys that uh, are ready to go and, and understand that uh, in order to win against a tough opponent, you've got to do a lot of things right. Jeff, do the coaches or the players do a lot of talking this week about how to handle success? And sometimes you come off a loss like the loss against Minnesota where it eats at you for a couple of weeks. It's pretty easy to come out and be ready to play. Now these guys have had guys, people telling them all week what a great job they've done. The next step is can they handle success and build from that? You know, we've talked about it a lot. Uh, I really don't want to over-talk about it to them, uh, but we have addressed a lot of things uh, in that aspect uh, about the hunger that it takes uh, to, to win, uh, the fuel that needs to be inside of you to drive you to win. Uh, sometimes when you lose, that fuel is easier to get out because you're angry and you want to prove people wrong. And sometimes when you win, there's too many people patting you on the back. And just if you just let up a little bit, and a lot of people let up a little bit, then things aren't going to go well. So, you know, our mantra all year long, uh, ever since I've been here, is it's a one-game season. Uh, it'll never change. We talk about it quite, quite a bit. We understand that, you know, if you lose the week before, you got to follow it up with a win. And guess what? If you win the week before, you got to follow it up with a win. So every week is a new challenge, and you can't get too high or too low. And you got to understand that, uh, you know, you have 12 opportunities this year to show what you're all about. And every week, you should try to raise the bar and get better and push yourself uh, to figure out ways to, you know, to play at the highest level you can. And if you if you're doing that, then you look at the scoreboard and you hope that you win more than you lose. All right, we're coming to you from Wolfie's in West Lafayette. When we come back, we'll hear from Cadron Jenkins, our defensive end from Georgia. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. Bobcat. And shooting is Pitty, and it's just off the tips of Bova. Here. Let's pop back in, and Bova is going to use that long reach to lob it over. Even corners. That lift is hit right at Bova. So dangerous, 1v1, Fisher, Bova saves. And the consensus of saying those are Ohio State's three. Kitty, Jones, Black, Jones, Black, and Bova's there. Against Wisconsin with that effort. Lambert, Dudukovic inside, Lambert there, but it's spilled, and now Bova cleans up the mess. The season best for her in 48. Tegan Jones grinding down to the byline and her cross is gonna fall to Griffith who wins it! Sarah Griffith on her first shot of the night scores her 12th goal of the season. Purdue, 36 seconds into overtime, feels it. Here in Central Ohio, Tegan Jones with the fingertips for Kalinski and 
That's what she does. She's a poacher, puts herself in position. A Sarah Griffith wins it for the Boilermakers. She's now scored in six straight games. 18-16, Purdue on top by two. Here's Horner. Beautiful delivery. In terms of where you're seated in the tournament. Bush has got room right on the sideline. Hook going off speed. Defensive specialist out of Virginia on to serve. Off speed. Wow. Three hitters stacked on the left for Purdue. Good swing by Newton. Wow. Rollins is loose. It's just a roll it back under the net type swing. No defense for that. Newton going high flat. Wow, that is a clutch swing. Really beautifully placed. But I got, I meant to get through it. Now, where is, where in the state of Georgia is Louisville? I know where Louisville, Kentucky is, but I don't know where Louisville, <laughs> Georgia is. Um, you ever heard of Augusta, Georgia? Yes, I have. Well, they have a pretty famous golf tournament there yeah. every year. So, mm -hmm. I'm like 30 minutes from Augusta, okay. Georgia. Have you, you've never had a chance to play on the Augusta golf course, have you? No. I, 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 I suck at golf. <laughs> uh, um, why Purdue? Why did you come up to uh, Indiana from here? Well, I fell in love with the coaching style when um, I – came on my official visit and um how they were treating me and it's like a family here uh, you got all the Braun brothers and it's just like a family you know you, you last year was such a unique experience uh with no fans in the stands and you only got to play six games what was the transition like coming from high school to college in general and then for that first season to be as strange as it was how difficult was that well it was very strange because like my first game, it was no fans there, so I'm like, it was like practice. So I'm like used to it, and it, it was very strange. I'd never been in that type of environment. Could you notice it during the game? Because you, you talked to a lot of guys that played last year, and they said when the game itself was going on, you really didn't notice it. it was when you took your helmet off on the sideline, and you realized, hey, there's nobody here. Yeah, I, I definitely noticed that. I definitely noticed that. Like, I took my helmet off, like, well, this is like practice. <laughs> I'm going to treat like practice. All right, let's flip that then. You come out for the opening game against Oregon State, and the place is packed. It's a night game. Uh, the adrenaline that had to be going through your body, was, I, I would guess, was off the charts that night. <laughs> yeah, it was. Like, the first play, like, I was like, I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> I couldn't feel my legs. Just hope they keep moving, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but after, then, after the first drive, I got, I got better, and they got used to it, all the fans. You have a new coach this year. Mark Hagan is your defensive line coach. How would you describe Mark Hagan to someone who's never met him before? Aggressive. <laughs> he down like he gets straight to the straight to the point. You know, he he all about his business. So yeah. What can you learn from a guy like George Karloftis every day in practice? What kinds of things can he teach you? Um, I would say leadership and how he lead people and um the way he worked at the uh, like he go in, he do the right things all the time. He be at the facility all the time when he need to be. And he just listen to the coaches all the time. All right, did you bring the right clothing last year? Because I'm sure coming from Georgia, you didn't quite have all the winter <laughs> coats that we have here. Were you prepared for your first Indiana winter, and are you better prepared for your second one? I'm better prepared. There you go. <laughs> See, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Well, Cajun, congratulations on a great season so far. Let's keep it going in the second half. Yes, sir. All right, it's the Jeff Brom Show, and when we come back, we'll hear from Aiden O'Connell, our show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group, back after this from Learfield. For one Petrus with time, high throws, picked off at the 25-yard line. One and a half sacks two years ago. Pass play here, and here comes a sack. Nowhere to go for Petrus. Branson Dean with his second sack of the year. Jack Plummer is in the game now at quarterback. So Purdue playing its second quarterback, and he keeps it here and has a huge running lane. Across the 45-yard line, it's a gain of 12 for Jack Plummer. O'Connell steps up, keeps it, and dives in the end zone for the Purdue touchdown.
touchdown. Uh, yes, it would. It would be very surprising, to say the least. Big play again in the backfield by Jenkins. He had the last four against the Hawkeyes. Iowa rushes five, and here is David Bell out in space. Look out! Bell into Iowa territory. They're trying to catch him at the 30. He's pushed and finally runs out of bounds. The country. O'Connell off his back foot on a jump ball, and it's caught. What a grab that time by Brock Thompson. Got to be the primary read here for O'Connell. O'Connell rolling right, throwing, and it's caught by Sheffield for a Purdue touchdown. Play fake here. Setting up, taking a shot, going for David Bell. It's pulled in inside the 25-yard line. It is play action. Petrus in trouble, and he's going to get sacked. Play for the football. Second and 18. Trouble again, and it's Karloftis with the sack at the 10-yard line. Of O'Connell gets rid of it. Oh, it's caught for a first down. It's David Bell who's there again. But well, Purdue's had the ball essentially this entire half. Yeah. O'Connell, pump fake, thrown to the end zone, and the ball is on the money. It's caught. Touchdown by David Bell. Petrus pass over the middle is picked off. That's going to end the game. Cam Allen. Back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Ross Aid Stadium. We're joined by Aiden O'Connell, starting quarterback for the Boilermakers, coming off a performance on uh, Saturday 30 of 40 for 375 yards. And Aiden, we were talking with the coach about David Bell's performance. Nobody had a better seat in the house than the guy that was throwing him the football. How hard is it not to want to throw the ball to a guy like David Bell on every single play? It is definitely hard. He's a, a special playmaker. Um, and, again, it's, it's kind of hard to know what makes him so great. He doesn't look like he's running that fast or, um, you know, he's not going to really yell ever, be super intense. But um, he's super calm, level-headed, and uh, a great leader for us, leads by example. And, even off the field, a great kid that everyone loves. So just a great player for our program. You know, the coach has talked about how great the quarterback room is and the fact that you guys root for each other. And, and when the season started, you were not the starting quarterback, and now you are. Walk us through that process from a mental standpoint. How were you able to stay on a high positive note and be ready to play when your number was called? Yeah, I think it's um, it's it's partly because I love the other guys in the room. And, um, you know, I, we all prepare like we want to be the starter because we all do. And, um, I, I wanted to prepare because I wanted to be ready, but also I wanted to help Jack when he was playing, and if Austin was in there, want to help Austin. So I think it's um, a room that feeds off each other. At the end of the day, we want the best for each other. I love those guys. I love to see those guys. Like you said, it's indescribable. It's um, an experience I'll, I'll remember the rest of my life um, because of how much I love my teammates. I love my coaches. Um, so it's uh, you understand the, the team aspect of the game and what it took for us to win. Uh, it wasn't just one or two individuals. It was an entire team, and when you start to take a step back and see it from that perspective, you walk in the locker room and look around. A lot of coaches and players that work their butts off to get there. So, yeah, it's an it's unbelievable feeling. You've graduated from the Craner School of Management with a management degree. You're working on a master's degree now, and I know that this is a one-game season and we've got 2021 to look at. What's your plan right now? Do you have a plan for 2022 at this point? Uh, still figuring it out. Um, a lot will depend on how the rest of the season goes. But, um, you know, with COVID, we all get another year of eligibility, so it could – potentially come back for another year. So we'll see. But um, like you said, I think the, the main focus is uh, playing Wisconsin. Remember, Mr. Blutarski and Animal House had seven years. So, you know, <laughs> you, you, there's always time for more. Aiden, congratulations. It was a sensational game. Great to watch on Saturday, and let's keep it going. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right, the head coach will be back with us. It's the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. Petrus's pass is intercepted. O'Connell, pump fake, throw to the end zone, and the ball is on the money. It's caught for a touchdown by David Bell.
guys believed you could do it, okay? You believed you could do it, then you went about it, and you got it done, okay? So yeah. the credit goes to everyone in this room, every player on the field for a bunch of plays. A few plays are on the sideline. Credit goes to these guys in this room. You guys earned it, okay? You stuck with it. You continue to work, you continue to grind, you did a tremendous job. Okay, credit to the assistant coaches, did a great job. Yes, okay, we worked hard through the off week, we got guys as healthy as we could, we came out here and practiced, we came out here and competed to the end. Okay, because you guys competed to the end. Yes, sir. All right, oh, yeah, we so did. just realize how good you can be if you're willing to believe you can get it done, yes, sir. and you're willing to do everything it takes to go get it done. And you guys did that. Yes, okay, this is a big win, you guys earned it. All right, you worked for it, you grinded for it, you gave effort throughout the game, you made plays over and over again, and you just hung in there to the very end and you played to the end. So I couldn't be any prouder than everyone in this room. You guys need to enjoy it. All right, this is a special win. Tremendous job, couldn't be prouder, and that's awesome. Let's go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Purdue and Wisconsin, and we're only going to mention this once because there's no sense in beating a dead horse, but let's face it, it's been a while since Purdue's had success against the Badgers. The last Boilermaker win in, in, in all was in 2003. The last time Purdue beat Wisconsin in ross Aid Stadium was 1997. That was Joe Tiller's first year, and the backup quarterback that day was a guy named Drew Brees. So that tells you how, how long it's been. Now, I don't know if any of your guys were born in 1997. Probably, maybe, I don't know if Ansel's that old yet, but uh, they have nothing to do with the streak, but they're going to hear about it all week. The bottom line is they're facing a good football team and an outstanding football program. Well, we know what we're going up against uh you know, Wisconsin, they played a tough schedule. Their only losses were against top teams across the country and uh, Penn State and Michigan who's undefeated and Notre Dame. Uh, and they're just a really big physical football team. It's a hard matchup uh, when you face a team that has the size uh, that they do and the strength and uh, plays aggressive, solid defense and has a running game that controls the ball. You, you've got to figure out a way to – to do some things that uh, get them on their heels. And uh, that's going to be, you know, the challenge for us this week. I do think our guys, you know, if we believe in ourselves and we want to go out there and find a way to, to get it done and want to put in the work, yeah, we, we can do it. Uh, but we've got to do a lot of things right. We've got to play together. We've got to play, you know, for four full quarters. You know, the thing about Wisconsin, and it's really the same since Barry Alvarez has been there, you know they're going to run the football. You know they're going to throw the ball to the tight end. You know that every once in a while they're going to take a shot down the field. They're going to play in your face defensively, and they're going to have solid kicking game. And that's year after year after year. So that doesn't change. And it still hasn't changed. And uh, it's a really good formula. Um, and uh, you know what? Uh, we just have had a hard time against them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be something that uh, hopefully the fans are into the game. Hopefully it gets our players jacked up. Hopefully we're, we're ready to go from uh, the opening kickoff. And we understand that, uh, you know, this is going to be a – uh, a fight to the end and we've got to just hang in there as long as we can and figure out a way to you know like I said get a lead and, and make them do some things they're uncomfortable with you know I would guess defensively they're going to do things a little bit differently than Iowa Jim Leonard who was an outstanding player for the Badgers now is their defensive coordinator and they'll uh, they'll do a little trickeration defensively but they're pretty solid in what they do well, you know, he kind of comes from the Buddy Ryan tree and he's very aggressive and he's going to blitz uh, from all over he's going to uh, have simulated blitzes where he's blitzing here, but he's dropping guys out there, and he really just tries to fool your quarterback into throwing interceptions and uh, overload the protection and guard routes uh, up close. And, uh, you know, just a lot of really small things that if you don't study the game, you're not going to be able to tell the full difference. But when you do study, you're like, oh, geez, that's really good. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> hey, okay, guys, we got to be alert for this. you got to watch out for this. You have to have your eyes open. When this happens, something else happens over here. So it's just a um, – you know, somewhat excuse me, complicated system, that, but they understand it, and they're good at it. And uh, they play with athletic defensive ends. They drop them into coverage a lot, and they blitz guys from the inside and just really do a lot of things to challenge your offense to execute at a high level. Uh, they got a couple of players, Leo Chanel and Jack Sanborn, that get a lot of uh, attention on that defensive side. At three-man front, you expect to see a lot, I would assume, a lot of the three-man front then from them that this week? Well, kind of what they do is when you're um, – 
in running sets with two tight ends or two running backs. They'll bring in three really big defensive linemen and two athletic ends. So really it's five guys up on the line of scrimmage. And then when you're in more of passing sets with uh, you know three receivers or four receivers, then they will get into a four-down look, uh, but stand up both of their defensive ends because they're athletic and they do a lot of things with them. So, you know, we, we kind of know what we're going to see for the most part, uh, but they're really good and they, they know how to take away your strengths. Yeah, we talked about the tight end, Jake Ferguson, who is the grandson of Barry Alvarez, the longtime coach and athletic director up there, is a guy that he's their leading receiver. Uh, he's the guy that they go to in clutch situations, and he's another one of those guys that feels like he's been there 10 or 15 years. Well, that's, that's the big part of their team is uh, throwing to the tight end, just like you said. You've got to know where he's at. Uh, a lot of times he'll you know, be split out to, to the field as the number three receiver inside, and they're going to throw to him. And a lot of times he'll be s- split into the boundary by himself, and guess what they're going to throw to him. And those are the two areas you have to cover him. And uh, there's only a few routes that they run, but they run them well, and you have to defend it. So we've got to do a good job. Fortunately for us, uh, a couple weeks ago, Jalen Graham, was tremendous locking up Notre Dame's tight end for one catch for four yards, uh, and we've got to figure out a way to get that same performance. All right, we'll have our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group coming up. This is Boilermaker Football from Learfield. Attention. Good luck to Dave Shondell and the Boilermaker volleyball team. They'll tip off, or I guess a first serve off here in about an hour over at Holloway Gymnasium taking on Michigan State tonight. Jeff, it's been an outstanding fall season for a lot of teams. The women's soccer team is ranked. Of course, men's basketball is right around the corner, and now the football team is ranked, and that success seems to build upon itself. Well, I really feel like this is a, um, a great place to be, and um – you know, we got a lot of hungry teams that are out to prove themselves. And uh, to this point, uh, a lot of teams are off to a good start. So hopefully we can continue through conference play uh, in all these sports and, and uh, stay on that same trend. You know, you look at October and getting into November here shortly, you're going to have some, some cooler weather coming up. But you're looking at the teams that you're playing on the schedule. You mentioned the meat of the schedules coming up. Physical football teams, you've got to be able to match and punch for punch and, and – uh, minimize the mistakes to have a chance to win at this time of the season. And that's Big Ten football, and that's where, you know, running the ball and defense uh, can give you an advantage, uh, you know, in some tough adverse weather conditions in the, later in the year. And, um, you know, we, we just got to continue to get better and work and figure out ways to score points. And if it happens to be on the ground or in the air, it doesn't matter. And defensively, we've – you know, just got to continue to improve and because uh, they've played at a high level. And I want them to be challenged to continue to get better. And, 
you know, we, 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 got, we got better the, this past game on defense and did a lot of special things and got us the ball back and got stops and turnovers and sacks and got after the quarterback. And that just has to happen. You know, solid defense has to happen in this league, and then you've got to find ways to score points. And a lot of teams do it by the run. But, you know, either, either way, you've got to get in, in the end zone and score points. One of the very few things that did not go well for you last Saturday was kick coverage, both on punts and returns, and it looked, or both on punts and kickoffs. It looked a little bit like the kicks themselves had something to do with that. Well, it wasn't one of our better days. We got up to a decent start. We wanted to squib kick it, uh, which just means kick it hard in the ground right before the end of the half, and we ended up hitting it a <laughs> line drive right to the returner, who's really good. So that didn't go over well. Uh, punting was okay. We didn't have to punt very much. Now, right. at the end of the end of the game, when we were trying to run out the clock, uh, we had to punt, and you know they they brought an all-out blitz every time because they knew they they had to block the kick to get back in the game. So it made us adjust a few things just to make sure the kick wasn't blocked. And when that happened, it it affected our our kick coverage, and they got some returns. So those are small things we got to work on. But uh, you know, winning the special teams battle has to happen for us, and we we hopefully you know, can have a more consistent game this week. Just overall, we're at the halfway point of the season, six games down, six games to go. How is the, where are you with this team? Are you, are you pleased with where the team is in terms of building from the start of the season and what needs to be better as you go to the second half? Well, without question, I'm pleased with our team. They've worked really hard. Uh, they care. Uh, they give us great effort. We've competed and been every game uh, with, with a chance to win, and that, that's the, the main thing you have to do. And you know, just winning the game and doing the small things right and finding a way in the, in the fourth quarter and second half to get over the hump and pull out a win is, is, the, is what we need, to, you know, we need to work on. And uh, there's a lot of small things that just have to happen. And then, of course, on game day, you, you have to execute and you have to have a little luck on your side. And, uh, you know, every team is going to be competitive. And, you know, the key is just having the fight and the will to want to win. And uh, you hope that you can win as many as you can. But as long as our guys are giving us everything we, what they have and they're working hard and they go out there and compete and we're aggressive, then, then we'll live with the score. But, uh, you know, those are th- small things that you just have to worry about and not get so consumed with the outcome of the game. Jeff, congratulations on the win Saturday. The only thing Boilermakers would like more than that is to see another one this Saturday. Okay, thank you. All right, the Boilermakers against the Wisconsin Badgers. 3 o'clock will be the kickoff on Saturday at ross Aid Stadium. We want to thank our engineer tonight again, Gary Klein, filling in tonight for Wes Scott. Again, we'll be back here next uh, Wednesday night at 6.05 on the Jeff Brom Show. And don't forget the Matt Painter Show will be starting on many of these same Learfield stations on Monday, uh, November 1st. So that's right around the corner as basketball season will overlap into football. Our broadcast time on Saturday from ross Aid Stadium will be at 2 o'clock. Join us on Facebook Live on the Purdue Athletics site starting at 1.30. Pete Quinn, Kelly Kitchell, and I will preview the game. For the head coach, this is Tim Newton. This has been Boilermaker Football from Learfield.